The ancient Greeks were especially fond of geometry and particularly obsessed with three geometric riddles. All three of these unsolved problems had to do with construction, where only a straight edge or unmarked ruler and a compass are allowed. A surprising amount is possible with just these two simple tools, such as dividing a line segment into any whole number ratio and constructing various regular polygons. Of the latter, equilateral triangles and squares proved the easiest, but the Greeks could also construct regular pentagons, 15-sided polygons, and polygons with double the sides of the basic constructible ones. So from a 15-sided polygon, the Greeks could, for instance, develop a 30 or 60-sided regular polygon using only a straight edge and compass. However, three problems in construction obstinately resisted every form of attack. Angle trisection was one of these outstanding conundrums. Given an arbitrary angle, is it possible, using just a straight edge and compass, to divide it into three equal parts? Some angles, such as a right angle, are easy to trisect in this way, but special cases aside, the Greeks found angle trisection stubbornly resistant to all their efforts. They could do it if allowed a marked ruler and a compass, but with the odd exception not with an unmarked straight edge. The second geometry problem that stumped the Greeks was squaring the circle. Given a circle, is it possible, again using just a straight edge and compass, to construct a square with the same area as the circle. In the 5th century BC, Hippocrates of Chios seemed to make progress toward a solution by proving that a particular loon, that is a crescent shape with two circular arcs, has the same area as a triangle. His results showed that you can construct a triangle, and with some more work a square, with the same area as a shape with curved sides but no one could extend this result to fully square the circle. The third of the classic construction problems was duplicating the cube. Given a cube, is it possible with a straight edge and compass only to make a cube with twice the volume? Again, the Greeks found that it was possible with a marked ruler, but not otherwise. 2,000 years would pass before anyone took a step further, and when the breakthrough came, it was because of a new field of mathematics about which the Greeks knew nothing. In 1796, while still a teenager, the great German mathematician Carl Gauss found a way to construct 17-sided polygons, and by extension those with multiples of 17 sides, 34, 51, 68 and so on, he was also able to say which polygons, including heptagons and nonagons, couldn't be produced by his technique. What's more, all three of the classic Greek problems proved resistant to Gauss's method. For a while, the possibility remained that other new approaches might yield the long sought-after prize of the Hellenic geometers. But after a few decades, that hope was dashed forever. At the hands of a little-known French mathematician, Pierre Wonsel, whose life was shortened by self-neglect. After Wonsel died, a mathematical compatriot of his wrote, Ordinarily he worked evenings, not lying down until late. Then he read, and took only a few hours of troubled sleep, making alternately wrong use of coffee and opium and taking his meals at irregular hours. His great claim to fame came in 1837 when he proved once and for all that trisecting the angle and duplicating the cube were impossible and that Gauss's method could construct everything it was possible to construct using a straight edge and compass alone. There was absolutely no hope of any further breakthroughs on these matters. Both Gauss's and Wonsel's attacks on the three classic problems of ancient geometry relied on a branch of maths pioneered by two Frenchmen, René Descartes 
and Pierre de Fermat in the 1630s, now known as analytic geometry. It starts from the premise that any point on a plane can be represented by two numbers, called Cartesian coordinates, the values of the point on the x and y axes. Historian C. precursors to this field in Menaikmus of 4th century BC Greece and the Persian mathematician, astronomer and poet Omar Khayyam. But the flowering of the idea that geometry could be expressed using algebra had to wait, like so many other scientific revelations, until the dawn of the Renaissance in Western Europe. A key aspect of analytical geometry is that certain distances can be represented as the roots of polynomials. A polynomial is an expression like 4x plus 1 or 5x cubed plus 6x minus 1. In other words, it's a combination of terms that includes constants like 1 or minus 8, variables like x or y, and exponents like the 2 in x squared. A root of a polynomial is a value or values of the variable that makes the polynomial equal to 0. For example, the roots of the polynomial x squared plus x minus 2 are 1 and minus 2 because if you put these numbers in place of x, you'll zero out the expression. In analytical geometry, the problem of constructing polygons became the question of deciding which polynomials had roots corresponding to a distance constructible using straight edge and compass. Gauss found a way to construct all distances whose polynomials had degree equal to a power of 2. The 17-sided polygon resulted in a polynomial of degree 16, so it could be constructed. Wunzel showed, using Gauss's method, that both angle trisection and cube duplication were impossible because they led to cubic polynomials, polynomials with degree 3. His proof meant that mathematicians could stop looking for other possible ways of tackling these problems. There were simply none to be found. No matter what future developments came along and no matter how many armchair theoreticians or cranks tried to convince others, they'd come up with a solution. That left only squaring the circle in limbo. For this construction to be possible using unmarked rule and compass, it would have to turn out that the number pi, the ratio of the circumference to diameter of a circle, was the root of a polynomial of degree 2. This seemed highly unlikely even as early as the 17th century. In 1882, all hope of ever being able to square the circle was lost when Ferdinand Lindemann proved that pi is transcendental, that is a number which is not the root of any polynomial. The Greeks' attempts to solve all three of their great construction problems we now know were doomed to failure from the outset. But it wasn't as if they'd overlooked something or taken a wrong turn. They simply didn't have the tools available at the time to settle these issues any more than they had the means to measure the distance to the nearest star or prove the existence of atoms.